Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're back in the shop today and we are working on the rear spar as you can see here in the drawing and the rear spar is critical because there's a lot of different parts that need to be plotted on the rear spar that the holes have to be drilled precisely in the right spot so do a lot of measuring double checking and triple checking which I did and um, make sure you plot all your holes properly now one thing I did is I started working up a cut sheet from measuring off the center of the bolt hole right there on the rib attach fitting right that guy right there and I started making my measurements over per the plans for like the rib station like rib number two is eight and five eighths from that bolt, bolt hole right there um, so I started plotting all those onto my my aluminum here, my cap strips, and what I found was is that I wasn't lining up 100%. I was off a 16th here, a 16th there, minor mismeasures that, you know, when you start adding in the eyeball and the human element, you start getting a little bit off here and there. So what I did, I used these measurements fairly to you know to to get in range to get close to where I wanted to be and then what I did is I took my spar cap or my cap strip rather and I laid it on its respective main spar and I lined everything up so I come down here to the end if you come all the way down you'll see that I lined up well hopefully it doesn't get overexposed because of the sunshine you can see I lined up the end of the cap strip there or the yeah, the cap strip with the uh, end of the spar. And then I worked my way back down to the beginning here. And I double checked my measurement for the length of this piece. And I don't remember what it is. It's on the spar. It's 167, I think, or something like that. Anyways, and then I started looking at where I plotted my rib center lines. And they were just slightly off from the rows of rivets that I put in to hold in the angles. Now, keep in mind that the rib center line is where the rivet is, not where this edge of this flange is, where the rivet is. So what I did is I just kind of kind of laid everything out, got it in position, and then I then I marked it to correspond with the associated uh, rivet line on the front spar, on the main spar. This way my rivets will go in 90 degrees to the spars. So that's hint number one. Hint number two is you got to remember your no drill areas, like where uh, main spar rib number nine would be. This is where flap hinge number two goes. You don't want to drill your hole here. You want to drill that once the, the wing is starting to go together. So you can mark its general location just for reference, but mark it no drill because you don't want to drill. You no drill here. So again, moving along, and then you're going to get to another area that's important to consider, and that's the end of the aileron which is that red mark and the beginning of the flap there's a half inch gap between the two and right here is where one of your pocket ribs is going to end up this pocket rib marks the end of the aileron so you want to kind of not drill in this area because you want to be able to move that pocket rib right or left an eighth of an inch or so to make it line up perfectly with your aileron once your aileron's mounted so I'm just marking these areas so I know I don't want to drill any rivet holes here. Same thing here. This is my aileron steel bolts right into here and also the aileron hinge point on the rear spar bolts right in here. You don't want to drill this hole. You want to match drill it when you're when you're assembling the wing. And then on either side of it there's going to be a pocket rib and that is determined by the center line of this and some other things so you don't want to be drilling any ri any rivets in this area until you get that laid out so keep that in mind the rest of it's pretty much gravy you just go right on through and drill your stuff again you have to uh, be aware of your aileron hinge I'm gonna drill the hole on the top cap strip but on the top vertical top of the rear spar but I'm not gonna drill the hole on the the bottom cap strip this way I can line up the top hole and then match drill the bottom hole if I'm making sense. 
So there's things to consider right there. And then, of course, the last thing you have to do is you got to fill in, you got to fill in this area between ribs with rivets. And the rivet spacing is 1.026 as per the plans. And what I did is I made a fixture on my drill press. You've seen me do it before. So this fixture sets up my depth, so I'm dealing ex drilling exactly in the center widthwise. And then I got a little index mark right here that I line up with my marks on my, sp my spar cap, and that's where I drill my rivets. Now, to, to mark your spacing, I just took that same tool I used before for marking out uh, where the lightning holes go on the main spar, and I made a tool and you can see, let me see if I can get this right, you can see that I drilled two holes here so I can work from either side. I put a piece of tape across this hole so it's exactly in the center. And then what I do is I start at a rib location, like here. Sorry for the sketchiness of this video, it's iPhone. And I line up the hole, like so, and then I draw along this line right here. Then I come to the next one, and I put the line that I just drew in the little window there, the little hole I drilled, and mark the next one. And I, what I subsequently what I can do is I can mark all these lines, and there's 13 between, 13 rivets between each rib. So if you count from here to the next rib, it's 14 total or 13 to here. And you just mark them off, and then you slide it in here, line up your line with your line, bing bang boom, drill your hole, move to the next one, and now all your lines as you can see all your rivets are right in line all your holes your spacing set now I do that for just one rib out of the pair or excuse me one cap strip out of the pair the cap strip that sits underneath this on the other side of the the rear spar it's going to get match drilled to this one so I'm going to lay them on top of each other and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to drill these number 40 holes again and match drill it and I'm going to do that same thing for the bottom two and then once they're all matched up to drill to number 40, then I will finish drill them to number 30 in each spot. Pretty easy. It's just time consuming. But if you take your time, you'll get everything nice and straight. And hopefully when we put this thing in the fixture and start putting it together, everything's going to line up real nice and tasty. All right, that's it from the shop. Hope you all have a great day. Talk to you soon.